You know, it's funny how people can sometimes have radically opposing opinions on the same thing. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Control Out Delete. I'm not talking about the button combination, I'm talking about the webcomic. Anyway, the guy who does the webcomic played his very first Pokemon game last month. Obviously, it was black and white. He said he wanted to try it out because he heard good things about it, but he admittedly had never, ever played a Pokemon game before. Which, at this point, we're in 2011, if you haven't even played one Pokemon game for five minutes, th you, you're, a, you're a very rare species indeed, not that I'm trying to judge the guy, that's not my intention, but, uh, yeah, he said he was going to try it, and judging by the general content of his comic, I guessed that he wasn't gonna like it at all. And guess what? I was right, but what's really funny about his perspective of the game is that uh, his least favorite elements from the game are actually those where black and white vastly improved compared to their predecessors. For example, he said he wasn't impressed with the graphics and the 3D effects. Any of us who have been with Pokemon for a long time we were all like, holy shit, Castelia City! It's awesome! It's unbelievable! It looks friggin' cool! But he wasn't impressed, and he said the DS was capable of much better than that. Is it? Well, I don't know. I'm really no expert when it comes to hardware capabilities. But another thing he pointed out was that uh, you, you just see uh, the Pokémon moving around slightly. You don't really see them attacking each other, which is sort of odd because, well, as he said, he'd never played a Pokémon game before, else he'd know that even on the Wii it's sort of limited. You don't see them fully attacking each other and stuff like that. HACKS! God damn it! I can't wait to be out of this place! But, uh, yeah, as I was about to say, even on the Wii, it's a bit limited, though it's definitely an improvement over uh, the N64 and GameCube games. But, anyway, those complaints actually make me think, thank God he hasn't played a Generation 4 game, because the, the graphics were nowhere as good in Generation 4 as they, were, as they are in Generation 5, and the Pokémon, you just saw them, they're not moving. They're not moving at all. So if he hated Generation 5, then he still picked the right time to get into Pokémon from that kind of perspective, because it used to be worse. It used to be much, much worse. And speaking of which, another one, another thing he mentioned was that he found that the battles were going by uh, too slowly. TOO SLOWLY?! Generation 5 was a godsend in that aspect! In, in Generation 5, attacks go off much quicker, the HP bar moves a lot quicker as well, and there are no, you know, you, you don't see the weather every turn, there's just an indicator on the touch screen whenever you select your action. It's just streamlined a whole lot faster than in Generation 4, so once again, had he actually touched a Generation 4 game, which is reputedly with the one with the slowest battles, he probably wouldn't have gotten to the first gym before saying FUCK THIS SHIT and just destroying the cartridge with a hammer or something like that. So, yeah, another thing he mentioned also, and probably the weirdest, is, uh, even considering what I've said thus far, is that he found himself sympathizing with Team Plasma most of the time. Now, I, I, I understand that Team Plasma, their goal, well, uh, not gets his personal goal, but rather Anne's goal and everyone else's goal is to liberate uh, Pokémon from trainers. However, there are a few things that make Team Plasma really worthy of the hate they should rightfully get. As I've said several videos ago, the grunts are much, much bigger assholes than the grunts from any previous villainous team thus far. Just the way they act, you, you, you just really want to beat their teams and then PUNCH them repeatedly in the face with your own fists. And then there's the whole part where, yeah, they're trying to liberate Pokémon from bad trainers, but for Team Plasma, every trainer is a bad trainer. So they're trying to steal Pokémon from every trainer in the world. 
So, I really don't get how you could sympathize with that, even before factoring in Getsis. But yeah, it's true that, that Team Plasma is trying to pass itself off as a noble organization, kind of like the Magmas and Aquas, but j uh, the, in fact, all three teams are sort of, of the same. They're genuinely convinced that they're trying to do good, but it's their methods that really take them into villainous territory, especially when you see Team... Uh, Team, uh, not Plasma, but Team Magma trying to blow up a volcano, completely, completely incinerating two towns in the process. Nah, you just can't back that, can you? So the essence of that review, if you will, was to say that there are a lot of things that have untapped potential in those games. He mentioned the breeding system, and quite frankly... I think everyone's thought of, of the possibility of making crossbreeds at some point. I'm going to put Cresselia back in front because Zabdos is going to have trouble in this area. But, uh, yeah, every, everyone's thought of crossbreeds before, I'm sure. But there is still a very good reason why there aren't any crossbreeds. If you made crossbreeds with all the breeding combinations that exist right now, you would probably end up with tens of thousands of different Pokémon, and catching them all would definitely become a, a utopia. Absolutely. Besides, how would filling the Pokédex work? Would all the crossbreeds be in the Pokédex, or only the original species, or something like that? So yeah, there are a lot of questions that, uh, that uh, the, the whole crossbreed issue um, creates, and... On, the, on that same note, how do you balance these? How do you how do you decide on the typing, the stats, the move pools of those crossbreeds? That would just be a huge mess. The, the the way it is right now is simple, straightforward, and it's not without purpose. For example, breathing facilitates trading as lo as far as non legendaries are concerned, of course. And uh, you can also use breeding for egg moves, breeding ivies, natures, and all that stuff. They're already crossbreeds in a way because the, the, the offspring gets uh, some stuff from both the father and the mother. So balancing a, a game with crossbreeds would be a mess. Heck, even now it's a mess. As the events of the last two weeks showed beyond a shadow of a doubt, the line is extremely thin between powerful and broken. And having crossbreeds just would make things even more complicated. So, yeah, I'd say that the, the, the current way of doing things is the best. Don't touch it, no matter how people that are less educated may think otherwise. Because when judging uh, things like that, you really need to put yourself in the game designer's shoes, see what they're going for with this or that particular game mechanic. And I'm going to excuse Tim, that's the guy's name by the way, for, you know, not being fully aware of what breeding actually does because he'd never played a Pokemon game uh, until last month. So, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be too hard on him for that. But enough negativity, it's time to celebrate, because we are done with Victory Road. Finally, no more Victory Road in this LP. Ever. So, now, I'm j now that that's done, I'm going to heal my team, and, and after that we're going to head to the Turnback Cave. Yeah, remember that cave that was blocked off by Cynthia when we came back from the Distortion World? Well, now that we've beaten her into submission, we can actually go there right now, and there are a few things of interest there. Well, in Diamond and Pearl, uh, Giratina was there, that's where you caught Giratina, and I'm just going to go grab the leftovers and put in, put it on, I think I'm going to put it on Zapdos. So, yeah, leftovers, okay. put it on Zabdos because, well, Magnet, it, it's not going to accomplish a whole lot. Leftovers is a lot better anyway, so here we go. So we're going to head back to uh, the Sandoff Spring, which is wh uh, where the entrance to the Turnback Cave is located. But anyway, just to finish what I was talking about, it's really awkward to see uh, Black and White uh, being... Uh, reviewed in such a negative light, considering that, um, well, I would mention uh, uh, that uh, Famitsu 
gave a black and white a very, very rare perfect score of 40 out of 40. But perhaps even more telling is that here, I'm going to be fair, I'm going to be uh, consistent, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Even ye old Jacob had something positive to say about the game. And that, I think, is saying a lot. Then again, I give the guy props uh, for writing something that doesn't look like a gigantic trolling attempt. But, yeah, even people that are really unlikely to like it actually enjoyed Pokemon Black and White. So it's really weird to see, um, well, anything at all negative um, about this game. Of course, there are a few minor complaints, like the encounter rate, uh, the main game, which seems somewhat short. There are a few other gripes I have with the game, like, um, well... I'm gonna think of something, the lousy starters, I guess, so there are a few minor complaints, but they're just that, minor complaints. No game is perfect, and many of these things, I think, are going to be addressed in the deluxe version anyway. Anyway, enough about that, we're heading into the turnback cave. How this place works, it's sort of reminiscent of uh, the Lost Woods from Ocarina of Time, and that... You get in a room, and there are like uh, four exits every time you get into a room. Well, there's the one you came from, and there are three other ones. Now, how to get the correct one? Oh, you can't surf on there. Well, this kind of sucks. What's the purpose of that bridge, then? Well, I don't know if you could call it a bridge, but whatever. Uh, it's sort of awkward how it works. Uh, you had the choice between three exits. And there is a clue in the form of, you know, the layout of certain things in the room, like uh, rock smash rocks and stuff like that. And they say you're meant to uh, go into the one where the patterns are different uh, from the other two. But even though they're that sort of weird, because sometimes the patterns are just so weird that it's impossible to uh, make light out of these. Of course, there are probably people who are really, really pro at uh, getting through this place. I'm not, so it doesn't really matter either way because it's really easy. You, uh, you, ha you basically have to uh, get the correct exits three times before you reach a, third, a total of 30 rooms that you've been through. Otherwise, you get ejected back to the entrance and you have to try again. And if you do... Um, if you do it in less than 30 rooms, you get a prize. I think those prizes are just things that you can sell for money, except for the fact that, as I said, in Diamond and Pearl, uh, Giratina is waiting at the end, and in Platinum, there's an alternate entrance to the, to the Distortion World, uh, and there's really nothing interesting there except for the Griziosaur. Yeah, that's where you get uh, the Griziosaur for Giratina, which changes it, its form into the origin form, gives it levitate instead of, of pressure, and swaps the base attack and defense stats, and the base special attack and special defense stats. So yeah, the puzzle to get there is really awkward, especially since from what I've heard, even if you pick the correct exit, you only have a chance of uh, getting to... Uh, you know, the, the next pillar, because when you uh, get, when you pick the right room and you pass, um, the, you, you get to a pillar which tells you how many rooms you've been through and which pillar it is. First pillar, the second pillar, the third pillar. You need to, uh, to get to the third pillar in less than 30 rooms. Anyway, here's the entrance, and oh yeah, fog. Well, I'm gonna have to use defog if I don't want... Uh, I don't want random battles to be a complete pain in the ass in this area. And from here, there are four entrances. And past three pillars offer up to the before 30 is surpassed. Well, it's random gibberish that uh, I just basically explained to you. So that's Turnback Cave, and I'm going to take this one, because I really have no clue what I'm doing. Nope, wasn't the right one. Maybe this... This one? Yeah, random battles, so I guess we're going to see you next time. Because uh, we're almost at 15 minutes here, and since I'm still at the mercy of the time limit for whatever reason, I'm going to have to cut this here. So next time on Let's Play Pokemon Platinum, hopefully we are going to Griziosaur Bagfuck.